Relapse may always be possible, but it is never inevitable. Hey, y'all, uh, it's so good to be with you all tonight. I'm so glad that we get a chance to, to connect with everyone here. I want us to, uh, uh, I'm so glad we get a chance to connect with y'all during this crazy time. You know, we're, we're live here on Facebook, and so I want to give folks uh, a chance to jump on and, and say hello and say hi, leave any prayer requests that you have, or, or maybe you're watching this on a replay uh, later on. We're, we're so glad that you're here right now too. Uh, I want to uh, introduce myself, uh, let you guys know who I am. Uh, I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. Uh, I struggled with uh, anxiety, uh, depression, food addiction, and, and sexual addiction. And my name is Andy, uh, and I have the incredible privilege of being able to uh, be the, the national director for this thing called The Landing. Hey everybody, hey Cheryl, hey Luke, so good to see y'all. Uh, but I, I get to be the, the, the national director for this awesome thing called The Landing. And The Landing is Celebrate Recovery's student ministry. It's, it's uh, uh, a place for us to, to help our students find recovery from their hurts, from their hangups, and their habits. I love that Celebrate Recovery is a ministry that is, is all about finding healing and wholeness for the family. Uh, it's and it's so good to be here with you all and to spend some time with you. You know, tonight uh, here in, here in just a moment, we're going to be talking about what it means to to understand and, and avoid relapse within our recoveries. And and so, what are what are some of the causes uh, of relapse? What does the 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 cycle and the buildup of relapse look like? And then, what are some core truths that that maybe we need to turn to as we as we find ourselves? Uh, struggling within our recovery. Uh, but, but before we jump into that, uh, I want to remind everybody about something incredible that we have going on. Uh, this next week, we have our very first ever Celebrate Recovery online summit. It's, it's going to be so awesome. We've got brand new content that, that we're bringing that, it, that has never been presented uh, at a summit or a training conference before. Uh, and, and if you don't know what a, what a summit is and you're new to this Celebrate Recovery thing, uh, a, a, Celebrate Reco a Celebrate Recovery Summit is, is a, uh, a yearly conference that we do. And, you know, at, at first with this, uh, this pandemic that we have going on, uh, we weren't quite sure if we were going to be able to even have a summit. Normally, we do those in person uh, out in, on, the, on the East Coast and on the West Coast. Uh, and, and so we weren't sure if we were going to be able to have this, this yearly time for encouragement and training and, and, and worship and connection together. And, and so uh, our, our leadership at Celebrate Recovery started thinking about what are some ways that we can do this and, and started talking to, to the right people. And we were able to, to do this online Celebrate Recovery Summit uh, happening July 30th and 31st. And so we're, we're so glad that, that we were able to, to do that and we've got that coming up this next week. And it's been really cool. We weren't really sure what to expect with everything going on with it. Uh, but it's been so cool to see the response to it. We've, we've got over 11,000 folks signed up for the summit. That's so awesome. Every single state, all 50 states, we've got we've got people signed up for the summit. 23 countries are signed up uh, to, to do that. Uh, it, it's, it's so great that all across the world, we're going to have folks, uh, whether they're they're gathered together where they can gather together to, to watch it as as a group or, or just living rooms across the world uh, to to get some incredible encouragement and worship and connection during this insane season. And so we're, we're so excited for that. If you haven't registered uh, for the summit, uh, you can do that. It's at crsummits.com. And I think Nicole actually uh, pinned uh, a comment there. So crsummits.com, you can go and register for that. 
and uh, it's only $49 a person, which is just an incredibly good price for that. We've got over 20 speakers that are that will be given talks. We've got some really encouraging time. Rick and Kay Warren are going to be there, the skit guys, Hosanna Poetry. It's, it's just going to be an incredible, incredible time. And so uh, if you haven't signed up for that yet, I highly register or I highly recommend that you register for that. It's going to be such a great, great time next Thursday and Friday, July 30th and 31st. Uh, and also, uh, we've got some new Celebrate Recovery gear that's available. I'm, I'm wearing one of our new shirts right now. I, I love it. It says, Find Your Freedom uh, Through Celebrate Recovery. And you can, you can look at some of the new stuff that we've got uh, at a, a brand new website. It's called CelebrateRecoveryStore.com. That's Celebrate Recovery uh, store.com and you can check out that stuff there and so really check out check out that summit it's going to be such an incredible time so excited for that to happen next week uh, well like I said earlier we're, we're talking about relapse tonight uh, how do we understand it how, how do we avoid it and and we know that relapse it, it may always be possible but the cool thing is that it is never inevitable. You know, I, I will never forget the moment that I realized that that total freedom from, from my addictions, my hurts, and my hangups was actually possible. Uh, I was in my first uh, Celebrate Recovery step study, my first small group within Celebrate Recovery, and I remember a, a, a guy who would turn out to be my sponsor later sharing uh, about his victory that he had found through his addiction to pornography, which was the exact same thing that had brought me into recovery. And, and he shared at that point how he had nine years of freedom. And for me, as I was sitting there listening, I was like, man, nine years. For me, it, it, nine minutes seemed like it, it was a long time. And, and so it helped me to understand, like, I didn't have to keep fighting what I thought was the good Christian battle of trying as long as I could uh, and as hard as I could for as long as I could only to fall back into uh, my struggles again. But rather, freedom really was possible. Hearing how Jesus had changed somebody else and brought freedom in somebody else's life gave me the ability to start thinking, maybe I could fight this well too. Maybe I didn't have to inevitably give in to temptation. You know, I always knew that relapse was possible, but I, I know now that it's not inevitable. You know, chances are, if you're like me, uh, this season has brought with it some really unique challenges and struggles, and, and maybe you felt tempted uh, to pick back up some old cycles of dysfunction. You know, I want to encourage you, no, no matter where you're at right now, no matter how bad you, you may feel like you, you're struggling during this season, I want you to know that you are not alone in that. And, and Jesus has not left you to struggle alone in, in your recovery. Uh, his power, whether we realize it or not, is available to us in this moment. Uh, relapse doesn't have to be an option. We can actually choose... Uh, to, to trust Jesus in the moment with our harmful dysfunction in cycles. And, and so uh, tonight we, we want to look at uh, understanding relapse because it, it, it really is something that we can look at and understand and see coming within our lives and, and it is preventable within our recoveries. And so we, we want to look at some of the causes uh, we want to look at what, what does the cycle of relapse look like? Because it really is a cycle. It doesn't just happen within a vacuum. And then what are some truths that we can turn to? And so as I've thought about this idea of, of relapse uh, and, and was trying to think about, you know, what are, what are the causes of a relapse? And, and looking into my experience, both in relapses that I've suffered within my recovery, but also as I've walked through other folks that have walked through relapses of their own, uh, I really think that, that relapse starts to happen when we disconnect ourselves from ourselves, when we disconnect ourselves from others, and when we disconnect 
from God. Uh, and so let me, let me say what I mean by that. Uh, you know, first off, one of the causes is that we start to disconnect ourself from ourself. You know, uh, one of the reasons that I found myself in recovery in the first place was that I never knew how to process and, and understand the pain, the hurt, uh, and the stress that I was going through within my life. You know, uh, I was so good, my mind was so good at, at ignoring the pain uh, and, and, and ignoring what I was feeling, and I learned how to disconnect myself uh, from everything that was going on and escaping my hurt through through my addictions and numbing out through my addictions, whether it was through pornography, whether it was through my struggle with alcohol or food or relationships. And, you know, I didn't realize that I had these things called emotions that I had been ignoring and, and failing to, to recognize and process and organize within my life. And that my addictions were just a symptom of that. My, my addictions weren't the problem, they were a, a symptom of a deeper problem within my heart. And, and what's funny is that as we jump into this process of recovery and we start to find healing and we start to find freedom from what we're dealing with, the pain and the hurt in life, those don't stop. We, we rather learn a new way to deal with the hurt and pain and trauma within our lives. And what can happen is sometimes over time, we, we stop using the tools that we've learned within Celebrate Recovery. And we start to disconnect slowly from the things that we're feeling. New hurt and new pain happen and, and we fail to process it just like we did before we entered into recovery. I know for me, uh, I, I actually got married after I had entered into recovery. And, and even though I, I love my wife and I'm so glad that I, my marriage has been such a blessing to me, there's been some unique challenges that have, that have come with it. There have been new hurt and pain that has happened within my life. And so I can't just rest on dealing with my past hurt and pain. I have to continue to enter into where I'm at today. And when I don't do that, when I disconnect myself from what I'm feeling and what I'm processing, then I'm priming myself for a relapse. One of the other causes is, is disconnecting ourselves from others. And I, this has been one that I've seen has been a huge cause, especially during this season. Uh, you know, with coronavirus coming in, it is totally... Uh, just pull the rug out from underneath the way that we normally connect with people. And, and so that's been a unique way that it's been hard for us to connect with others. And, and, and we've, we've kind of had a forced disconnection from others in this season. Uh, but even during normal times, we can disconnect ourselves uh, from other people in the community within our life. Whether it is through allowing our schedules to get so packed that we... Uh, don't make time for, for either going to our meetings or, or spending time with our accountability partners. Uh, or maybe there's some shame going on within our life. Maybe we've, we've had some sort of hurt or trauma or been made aware of a new area of our life that we're dealing with. And, and that's brought maybe some, some guilt and some shame in there. And, and so we, we shift back into this hiding mentality that honestly, for me, it's what brought me into recovery as well. And, and so if we fail to continue to engage with our community of people around us, that's another thing that primes us for a relapse. Because the reality is, is we always, we always have an opportunity to connect with people, even during this time. Uh, I, I'm so thankful right now I'm I'm doing this Facebook Live on a cell phone, which is such a great invention because it allows me to pick up the phone anytime and call my sponsor. It allows me to connect with others rather than choosing to disconnect from them. And when I choose to disconnect from others, that, that is something that sets me up for a relapse. And then uh, kind of the third thing that I, that I was thinking about is we, when we disconnect from God and, and our relationship with Him, and again, this can happen so easily if we fail to protect the time that, that we have with our Heavenly Father. 
if we allow the, the busyness and the craziness of life to push out that time that we need with God, then, then that keeps us from spending time with him. And when we stop spending time with him and in his word, we're less able to combat the lies that we hear in, in our life because we're less able to hear his voice that's going on. And, and, and as we allow our relationship with our heavenly father to slip, we, we find ourselves easier and easier to be able to fall into the temptations within our lives. And, and so the combination of those three things, the disconnecting ourselves from ourselves, disconnecting ourselves from others, and disconnecting ourselves from God, I really think in just about every relapse I've experienced or every relapse that I've, I've walked through, those three things are at play. And those are some of the root causes for the relapse that, that, that happened. And, and so it's not just the causes that we need to be aware of and, and understand, but we also need to understand what do the phases of a relapse look like? Because a relapse doesn't just happen one day. It's not like one day I find myself back at that website uh, in, in acting out or, or find myself uh, drinking again. It, there's a buildup to it, and, and I love it. And uh, I'm, I'm getting... Uh, this, the, these four phases of a relapse, they actually come uh, out of a, a great book uh, called Life Sealing Choices uh, by Pastor John Baker. Uh, it's a great CR resource, and, and I can't think of a better way to explain these phases of relapse. But it's four C's, complacency, confusion, compromise, and catastrophe. And, and so the first phase of a relapse is called complacency. See, a relapse begins when we start to get comfortable with where we're at. And, and we start to believe that our level of change and growth has, is, is enough. That, that since I've found a certain level of freedom, then maybe I can coast for a little bit. Uh, that the lie of complacency says that I can plateau that I can maintain this level of growth, and then I can pick up and start growing whenever I want again. And, and you know, that idea is such a lie. I remember when I was playing football in high school, uh, one of the things our coaches always yelled at us was, you know, you're either getting better or you're getting worse every day. We never, ever stay the same. And it's exactly the same thing within our recovery. We, we are either getting, we're either growing closer to God or we're moving away from God. And if we're, if we're not careful, we can start to think that we're the one making the changes. That uh, it's, it's my power rather than God's power. And, and we can start finding our dependence rather than finding it on God. We can start to find it on ourselves. And, and so complacency is the first phase of it. And then that moves into confusion. And confusion is, is the phase where our thinking starts to get distorted. The phrase, I've got this, becomes really commonplace within the confusion phase. And really, I think this is the point where we forget how bad it was when we were living in our dysfunction. We forget the pain that we caused ourselves caused others and, and, and that we, we were stuck in, in there. And, and we stopped thinking clearly. And, and maybe we start to think, ah, maybe this whole dysfunction thing that I had, maybe these whole addictions that I had weren't as bad as, as I thought they were. And, and as we move into that confusion phase, that leads to this thing called compromise. That's where we start making small concessions in our thinking and in our actions, in, in, our, in our faulty way of, of really understanding and processing our situation. We can start going back to our old playgrounds, our old playmates, and our old playthings. We can find ourselves saying, you know, I think maybe I can handle this now. Now that I'm at this level of growth, maybe I can have just one drink and I'll be fine. Or, you know, maybe I can, I can go back to that website or, or I, can, I can Google this phrase or, or, or I can hang around the people that I, that I used to hang, uh, hang out with and act out with. And, and our thinking ultimately starts to go towards, man, how close to the line can I get without actually going over it? And that's a dangerous place. We start to play with fire, and anytime we start to play with fire within our recovery, we are bound to get burned. And that leads us to the last phase of a relapse, which is catastrophe. 
And that's the end result of a relapse, is us falling back into that old addiction, into that old dysfunction, into, into that old way of living. And what we find when we, when we hit a catastrophe point is that we actually pick up right where we left off. Uh, in, in the phases leading up to a relapse, we might think, man, I can, I can just start right back at the beginning, but, but we always pick up where we left off in a relapse. We never just start over in there. And, and I make a point to say that catastrophe is the end result of relapse because the relapse actually begins when we slip into complacency. Uh, and I often tell sponsees of mine that I can, I can see a relapse starting within my life four to six weeks out because it, it's me slipping back into that same cycle of insanity. It's me slowly slipping back into dependence upon myself rather than reliance upon my Heavenly Father. And I, I disconnect myself from myself and, and from others and from God. And, and so how do we prevent falling back into this cycle? First off, we need to understand the phases of it, understand the causes of it, and, and make sure that we're, we're taking time to do some regular checks in our heart and what's going on. Uh, and, and for me, it takes me reminding myself of some core truths that I need to keep central in my heart and in my recovery. Uh, and the first thing that I need to keep in mind is I need to realize that I myself, I am not invincible to falling into temptation or old cycles of dysfunction. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, it says this, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. And that's, that's a really heavy warning. You know, it does not matter how long I have been in recovery. Uh, it only takes one poor choice to land me back in my dysfunction. And, you know, I remember my sponsor saying that a lot, uh, that, you know, he was only one poor choice away uh, from negating the growth that, that has happened in his life. And, you know, that's not us living in fear or bondage to our addictions. That's us having a right idea of who we are. You see, the moment that I start to put myself above a sin is the moment I can find myself in a sin. Uh, I need to make sure that it doesn't matter how much growth I've had, I've gotten to this point by living one day at a time. And I will continue to grow in my recovery one day at a time, one moment at a time, relying on God instead of myself. That's the beautiful thing about recovery is that, you know, it, it, it may be hard, but it is simple. <laughs> it's not complex. Uh, you know, and it takes humility to admit that, that we can still slip in to, to our old dysfunctions that we have. You know, James 4, chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. We need to have the humility to admit that we haven't arrived. And, and it's the same for me. Uh, that humility will be the best protection that we have against a relapse. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter me personally how much growth I've experienced or how much God has grown me. The reality is, is that left on my own, uh, I am just some 29-year-old guy that has a tendency to do the wrong thing. I can't rest on my past accomplishments for future growth. All I can do is be so grateful that God in his love has carried me this far and continue to rely on his strength to make the next right choice today. The, the second thing that, that we need to realize, another truth that we need to turn to is this. Even though we can't put ourselves above falling back into our old temptations, realize and believe that through God's strength, we don't have to fall back into temptation. I love this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is, is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And I find such comfort within that verse because it lets me know that I am not alone within my struggles. That verse where it says there is no temptation that is not common to mankind. 
What that means is that no matter what I'm dealing with within my life, no matter what addiction or struggle that I'm dealing with, there is somebody else in this world that can empathize with me in that. They may not have had my exact hurts or my exact trauma, but they understand. And I don't have to be alone in that because I'm not alone in that. Also, there's a promise in in that verse that God is faithful in the midst of my temptations. He sees me in the middle of it and he always gives me a way out so that I can endure it. One of the things that, uh, as I was talking to my sponsor in the beginning of my recovery, is that God always gives an escape hatch. Uh, He always gives me an eject button. In the middle of every temptation, he provides a way out. Uh, And and we can, with the help of others and and with the strength of God, we we can carry through any temptation. We do not have to fall back into that. Uh, and, and another incredible truth that we have uh, is, is realizing that my recovery, it doesn't work when I try to do it by myself. Uh, the truth is, is, and we said this before, is that we cannot do this alone. I need community and connection with my Heavenly Father through prayer and the practices of Principle 7 within Celebrate Recovery, and I need the care and support of my forever family, especially now during this time. I I need to make sure that I am doing what I can to reach out to the people within my community. Even if I can't meet with them face-to-face, I have ways available to me that I can reach out. I can pick up the phone and call my sponsor. I can go on our, our CRCR online open share groups. I can, I can find connection in, in worship through the summit next week. I can phone a friend. I can text an accountability partner. I can, I can go for a walk and pray. I can, I can crack open my Bible and connect with my Heavenly Father in that moment. And, and it's so important for us to do that. The, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 4, uh, it tells us the importance of having people walk alongside us and, and, and the importance of us realizing that we can't do this alone. It says two are better than one because they have a good return on their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. No, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. You know, uh, one of the biggest temptations or one of the biggest reasons why I, I won't reach out in temptation is, is, is shame. The, the thing that says, uh, Andy, because you are struggling, people will not catch you in this. They won't understand what you're going through. They're going to judge you from what you're going through. And if I have relapsed, then they're not going to catch me in that. And they're going to reject me in my pain. And that is such a lie. Uh, Jesus himself, I, I love this, he, he tells us that he is with us always, even to the end of the age. And in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, He showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, he died for us. When we're in the, in the part of our lives where we're struggling the most, Jesus is still right there with us. And there are people that are willing to walk with us through it, no matter where you're at in the middle of this. We can't do this alone, and we need to make sure we're reaching out to, to those that are around us, uh, especially during this time when we're struggling. Uh, and the last thing for us to, to remember and for me to remember is, is really believing and knowing in my heart that God actually cares about me and actually wants to enter into my mess. You know, principle two in Celebrate Recovery, it says, earnestly believe that God exists, that I matter to him, and that he has the power to help me recover. Uh, He exists. He's here with me right now and always. He's a God, he's not far off, but rather he knows my name. He's counted the hairs on my head. Uh, he, He knows me completely and fully. And no matter what I'm feeling, there's the incredible promise that Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 and 15 give us. It says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who's been tempted in every way, just as we were, yet he did not sin. So let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You see, Jesus knows 
my weakness. He knows your weakness. He knows what it's like to be a human in this world, and he cares deeply for me and you in the midst of our mess. He doesn't just pity us from a distance, but rather he invites me and you to approach his throne of grace with confidence so that we can find forgiveness and hope and mercy in our time of need. We really can reconnect with him always, no matter where we're at. And I just want to say, you know, if, if you have relapsed in your recovery during this time, Jesus' love for you still remains the same. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've fallen back into your old cycles. I want to remind you that God still loves you. He still longs for you to come to him in the midst of your struggle. And his love for you is not dependent on your performance because he loves you with a perfect love. Meaning there is nothing that you could ever do to make him love you any less. And there's nothing you could do to make him love you any more than he does right now. There is no mistake or failure that makes him move away from you. He is always moving towards you and me in the midst of our mess. And so you can reach out to him in the midst of this time and you can reach out to those that are around you. And that's true for us no matter where we're at in this. You know, relapse, it, it, it's always possible, but it is never inevitable. Uh, our God has given us access to, to his power to change our lives and a hope that we never have to go back to our old way of life. We don't have to fall into the cycles of, of compromise and, and complacency and confusion and catastrophe. As we honestly confess our weaknesses, as we hold tightly to God's strength and rely on him and live in community with others and continue to grow in relationship with Jesus, we can have confidence that in the middle of this process, God is doing something in us. Philippians 1.6, and I, I want to leave with this. Philippians 1.6 says this, Being confident of this, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God has started a good work in you and in me, and he's not giving up on us, and he aims to finish that good work that he has started. So let's draw near to him, and let's draw near to others during this time. We don't have to fall back to our old cycles, but we can use the tools that God has given us through Celebrate Recovery, the, the, the incredible love that he's given us and the incredible community that he's given us during this time. And we can continue to live in hope and victory, even in the middle of a pandemic. So I, I love you all. I, I'm so glad to, to see you guys tonight, to be with you all tonight. Uh, I'm praying for you, our, our Celebrate Recovery uh, state reps and national team are praying for you as well. If you have prayer requests, leave them in the comments. We'd love to pray with you. Uh, and also, uh, if you haven't gotten uh, your, uh, your registration for the CR Summit next week, please uh, remember to do that. That's going to be such a great time of encouragement and connection, and we need that so much during this season. So, uh, we love you all. Let me pray for you and, and we'll carry on with our week. Uh, Heavenly Father, God, thank you for your incredible grace and love and, and, and power even in the middle of this season. Would you continue to walk with us? Help us to understand and see when we might be falling into the symptoms and phases of a relapse. And God, help us to, to find the grace and the strength to approach your throne of grace with confidence. To, to embrace your love and your strength for us during all seasons. God, we love you. Would you be with us as we go throughout this week? It's in Jesus' name, amen. All right, love y'all. We'll see you.